Welcome to Hostel Detroit. And uh, we were, are of the community. We were made by the community, um, all volunteers to get this place open, all donations of furniture and money um, to make this a reality. All everyone's name that uh, got this place open, we have them listed here by the front door. I am, um, I guess, from uh, the Flint, Michigan area, Goodrich specifically, and moved down to Detroit. And uh, when I moved down here, I am a big fan of the website Couchsurfing. And so through Couchsurfing, a lot of strangers from all over the world would contact me saying, we're coming to Detroit and um, we want a place to stay. Can you host us? Can you take us around? And you know, Detroit is this amazing city but only if you have, it's like an insider city, you know, only if you know where to go and you have someone to take you around and, and show you around, then it's incredible. Through all these couch servers and hosting them and uh, my experience staying at hostels, I decided at Detroit, um, in order to be more welcoming to visitors from all over the world coming to the city, um, needed a hostel. When you stay at Hostel Detroit, you get your own unique pin. So that gets you in and out of the building at any time. And the pin is only good from the day you check in to the day you check out, then it expires. So that is a part of our security system, is just to make sure that when you come here, um, you can use the building to the full extent that you need. But at the same time, if you lose your pin or somehow, you know, it's, it's not ever, a, we have no security issues just because uh, the only people in this building are the ones who are staying here and our staff and volunteers. When you come into Hostel Detroit, uh, we have a guest book. And so all of our guests um, from all over the world have been signing it and obviously we want you to sign too. So we're right by the train station and you can see the back when the trees aren't so lush. Um, you can see them at the back of Slow's Barbecue. So we are just um, in North Cork Town and we're really close to all of the Cork Town commercial strip, but also downtown is right there as well. We're only a mile and a half from downtown. So the city of Detroit, very, very large. Um, and you know, you've got like Southwest Detroit, which is um, the mostly Hispanic neighborhood. Um, you've got like the downtown Woodward Avenue, um, the big west side, big east side. So it's just, it's huge. It's expansive. It's a, you can actually fit the square mileage footprint of Manhattan, San Francisco, and Boston within the city limits. Um, of Detroit. So it's a huge city and so we here uh, decided that in order to help build community for visitors um, we would have a hostel and make sure that they know where to go and have people to take them there and have a place that they can stay that is welcoming and um, really makes them feel like we want them here in Detroit. We've always are giving out um, stuff to do in Detroit, maps of Detroit, um, this comes inside Detroit is a nonprofit downtown that do, they do tours um, of different neighborhoods. We got their maps to give out. Um, there's so much going on in this city. You know, there are people, uh, business owners, and, and events happening all over. And so we are here to help show that off. That that is our mission is to make sure that visitors are connected with the people that are doing things in the city, and then that way they know. Um, not only what's happening and, and who to talk to, but they also, they, they feel like they kind of have like that insider scoop because again, Detroit, it's, um, it's an insider city. Once you, once you know where to go, you feel like that this is your community and it's a very, very cool feeling. Here's our kitchen and lockers. So you can see we have recycling, we have um, lockers that you can rent to, for your valuables. It's big enough to fit in, you know, laptop, camera, um, any, I guess, uh, any other valuables. I mean, we didn't really want people putting bags in here just because no one's gonna steal your dirty socks. Like, you know, <laughs> the hostel culture is one that like people respect space and each other's stuff. And when you do go out and, you know, roam around the city, you can leave stuff here. Um, you know, you put, put a lock and life is good. You know, we've got coffee and tea all the time, but you can also make food. So when people come and stay at the hostel, they, have the ability to not only have a um, inexpensive place to stay, but also they can actually go grocery shopping and then cook their food here. And then that way they can spend more money out exploring the city. So here's the, you know, hostile computer. Um, you know, so when people need to look stuff up, all of the artwork and the paintings in Hostel Detroit, it's all local artists and photographers. We've got about 15 photographs from a guy named Lawrence Diggs who 
He's this um, old guy, grew up in Detroit, left like 50 years ago, lives out in the suburbs, but wants, he loves watching the city, you know, revitalize. And he is so excited to see all this stuff happening. So he came to me and said, hey, I'm gonna give you a bunch of my framed, beautiful photographs of Detroit to show off the city, you know? So just everything, all of the furniture, everything you see, all of these books, um, it's all donated from members in the community. Um, even the everything, the painting even. Um, Warren Wilson College, they left their mark. Asheville, North Carolina, it was an alternative spring break group of 12 uh, college students who came here in March. Stayed here, painted all the walls. Um, so I mean, there's every, every single inch of this place is all a collaborative volunteer effort. Hundreds and hundreds of people who were here all January, February, March, and April, every weekend um, doing things to make this a reality. And we have some students, some very motivated students that are building a, uh, that have designed and are fabricating a bike storage shed for Hostel Detroit. We're digging holes because we're going to be building a, a bike shed, but it's not like a normal bike shed. It's um, it's pretty cool. It's a, we should call it like a moment frame. So we have these big beefy timbers and they all kind of come in at interesting angles and then we're siding it with like um, sort of translucent plastic. So it's just, uh, it's very functional as a bike shed and I think we're going to be able to put some sort of a, like an alternate use space in there, like maybe use it as a stage once in a while to put like some electronic music, which uh, Detour is kind of famous for. We have bike rentals, so you can rent a bike when you come here. Um, we have a lots of, you know, lots of like uh, community meals and stuff that happen in the backyard. We built picnic tables. Um, but we made the bunk beds. Um, we actually, um, so we were in the Detroit Free Press mid-December and I got a phone call from a guy who said, hey, I, I saw you, um, I have a desk. And I said, okay, I'll, you know, can, can I, I'll arrange a truck. Mark, the guy said, oh, no, 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 I have a van, I can bring it to you. So he comes, he drops off what is now the front desk and I, I walk him around and at that point, this was still an apartment building. Nothing was here, we didn't really have anything. I didn't have any plans, I didn't have any money, I didn't really have a lot. <laughs> um, but I was like, we're gonna do this, Mark. And he said, okay, I happen to be a furniture designer. I'm gonna make your bunk beds for you. He just personally came and was here like every weekend, um, helping us to make sure that um, we had the plan for getting the, the, getting the wood and then coming up with the design and then putting them all together. Um, so yeah, so they were actually designed by Mark Wilson and are very, very sturdy. We have shelves. This is actually next, so a next project. We have shelves that we have um, stained and ready to just be put. So all of these bunk beds are all gonna have, you'll note that we actually have an outlet. When we had the electricians come in, every single bunk bed, both top and bottom, all have their own outlets. And then that way people, when they stay, can charge their phones and whatnot. Um, and then we were gonna put a shelf next to every outlet, I think. So then that way you can even rest your phone. So we, you know, we really want it to be um, comfortable and it is a hostel, but we want it to be as comfortable as possible. Uh, now we can head upstairs where we have apartments. Um, so we have full beds up there. Here's one of our rooms um, that have a full bed for couples. Um, so again, you know, we have both bunk beds and full beds. So then that way we can accommodate all guests. This mural is really cool. It's actually, it shows a lot of the people who are been, um, from Detroit, um, famous Detroit musicians. Within a month of us opening, um, the New York Times did a 36 hours in Detroit and they mentioned us as a new place to stay um, for people who are looking for um, kind of a low, low cost but high quality place. So very excited, uh, here's the article. Thanks for coming. Um, again, we, right now you're in the apartment that we actually had uh, students from Central Michigan University's honors program. They came down and painted all this. Uh, so they painted the city motto and you know, that's again just representative of what this place is. It's, it's made by the community, um, ran for the sake of showing off the community. And so yeah, welcome Hostel Detroit. We're so glad uh, to have you. And please come see us. Uh, you can check us out on our website, make reservations on our website, um, Hostel Detroit, so H-O-S-T-E-L Detroit.com. And our hostel manager, Michelle, he will be there to greet you. Uh, thanks for coming and um, please definitely spread the word.